Hi, so uh, I'm Brian, and I'm here to uh, show you that 3D graphics doesn't need to be complicated. Uh, Chris Fritz gave the great intro to it earlier, and you could see all the crazy code. Uh, it can be actually really simple, uh, and it only really takes your knowledge of like HTML and you know standard browser techniques. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, this is uh, A-Frame. So A-Frame is a project that was developed by um, Mozilla, and uh, it lets you define a collection of uh, primitive shapes and a 3D scene in, uh, in the DOM, right? So the, the DOM, as we have learned over the course of the, these two days, is uh, actually not really that performant. Wouldn't it be great if we could use the virtual DOM instead? Uh, and so I got to thinking, wouldn't, be, wouldn't Vue be great for 3D, right? So here it is, there's Vue in 3D. Thank you very much. <laughs> nah, that's... So uh, this is the plugin that I've developed, uh, Vue Babylon JS. And uh, instead of you know, the, the DOM or your HTML, instead we're doing a component template here. So uh, that's a lot to take in. Don't let it deter you just yet, right? So uh, what's with the Babylon JS part? Um, Babylon JS is actually the underlying graphics engine that I'm using. Um, and this is the Babylon JS homepage, and you can see that they have a ton of uh, examples, right? Just anything that you could possibly imagine has probably been made from video games to marketing web, web pages and everywhere in between. Uh, the Babylon JS core team has been absolutely fantastic in helping me put together this plugin. Uh, so I really wanted to give a shout out to them. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, the plugin is actually just like any other plugin. You can install it uh, just like you would like Vuex, for example. So you can get it off of NPM. And here's your very first scene. It's uh, five lines, right? And that uh, just puts together the default scene, um, which I'm going to show you right now. So this is it right here. It's just a box. It's not very exciting yet, right? So we want to give it uh, a little bit more uh, snazzy appearance. Uh, we can do some coloration and uh, modify our box. So this part is the most, most important part, probably the biggest question that I get in the repository issues, is uh, in order to get started, you have to initialize your scene. So the default scene that we saw before just sets up the default environment, which is that really drab gray background and everything. But by putting in a camera and a light, you've initialized your scene, and you're telling uh, Babylon JS, hey, I want to control this and the look and feel of it. Um, and then next, we're going to add a material to this box. And in this case, we're just adding some green color. And the great thing about this library is you can just pass in color codes, right? And it's, it looks a lot like you, you know, you're working with HTML or CSS. And then uh, this part, which you don't have to worry about too terribly much, is actually part of the property system. So we're setting a property on the scene called clear color, and that's just telling it that we want a white background. The property scene is really important you know, as you get more into the library because it lets you change things that I haven't necessarily accounted for in the plugin. So if you wanna, if you wanna change something underneath the hood, then you can use a property. Um, later on, you can also like access the objects that are actually constructed by Babylon JS. Uh, so here in this example, we've sort of evolved our uh, um, look and feel a little bit more. So here's that property component again. Uh, in this particular example, we're just increasing the light so that it's a little bit brighter. And that just makes the color pop a little bit more. And then in this here is the animation component. So the great thing about this is that you can uh, actually define keyframes. I haven't shown it here, but just like you would in CSS animations. So. You can uh, animate any property you could possibly think of, position, scaling, rotation. Uh, in this case, we're just spinning it. And uh, you can use that view data binding syntax to uh, do all sorts of crazy math in there if you really want to. So in this example, uh, you can see it's a little bit more complicated. But really, the thing that you got to worry about is we're adding physics. And it's as easy as dropping in these physics components. 
uh, the library automatically loads in Canon JS for you to use. And uh, I can actually show you a live version of this. Oh. So there you go, there's the view logos. And uh, it's really simple, you just add in the component. Um, in this particular case, uh, Chris t uh, talked a little bit earlier about how you can write shaders. And uh, in this uh, example, you can actually write your shaders in uh, vertex and a fragment component. So if you want code to run on the GPU, it's as easy as just writing as if it were a script tag uh, in HTML, right? And then uh, similar situation, I've got it here running, so you can actually look through it. And in this case, the shader uh, that's most important, important is the fragment shader. So it's actually running code on every pixel that's uh, displayed here. And then, uh, so come, uh, in, the, in the latest code that I've released uh, just this past month, um, I actually updated uh, a couple of things that people were really asking for. So um, one was uh, this sort of concept of when is my object ready, right? When I put something in the scene, uh, I, I wanna know. So I've attached event listeners for entities and for the scene, and uh, it will uh, you know, run your uh, view uh, bound listeners when um, those events fire. Uh, this complete handler is actually a little bit more complicated and what it does is it actually uh, figures out every single component in your scene and will only fire when every single object in that scene is ready to go. And then this last one, this is actually attaching to um, observables in uh, Babylon JS and it's as simple as just adding a dollar sign to the end of the name of the observable. Um, in the listener. So uh, coming up soon, also, uh, we're gonna have um, model loading. So in this case, you can load uh, OBJ file formats, um, uh, GLTF file formats, and um, in this case, uh, the, the STL file format as well. Um, and I'll just show you here. So this is an uh, example of those file formats getting loaded in. And uh, it's, I'm tried to make it as simple as like loading an, Im an image tag, right? So uh, I do have one last little thing, and that's, let me reload this. So this is the uh, Vunicorn submission that I've made. Thank you very much.